the unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. In Congress, July 4th, 1776. Welcome to Firehouse Talks with Jersey Rick, Igniting Leadership Excellence. This is episode number 11, and today is July the 4th, Independence Day. I'm Rick, and this is my host, Emily. Wow, happy Independence Day. Nice. Happy Independence Day to you. So today is July 4th, so 248 years ago since the Declaration of Independence was signed by the Second Continental Congress in what was known as the Pennsylvania State House back then. Yes, and we've had the opportunity to visit there more than one time. But yeah. Emily, I fear um, and I'm greatly concerned, I know you are too, for the direction that our nation is going, and it is not going in a good direction. I'm going to hell in a handbasket. So yeah, kind of you could say that, yes. Uh, yeah, we've come a long distance since 1776. There has been much good, but now we see an incredible amount of bad taking place in our country, and it's really sad. Yeah, you're right, Emily. There has been a lot of good in this country, and this is still a good country, Absolutely. regardless of what some of these left-wing woke individuals are saying. And the politicians in our country who are literally destroying this nation. There, yeah. There is good, and there's still people, and I'm not talking about the ones that are coming in this country illegally across the borders, but there's still people who are coming into this country, and they live the American dream. And all somebody has to do is turn on some episodes of Shark Tank and watch that and listen to the immigrants who have come here legally They've come here legally, mm -hmm. and they legally have become citizens, and they talk about the American dream. Far different than the radical, destructive, domestic terrorists that we have seen take over the streets of so many cities yeah. in our nation since the spring of 2020. Radical groups that are out there tearing things down. You might be saying, hey, I thought this was a leadership podcast. It is, folks. This is a leadership podcast. And we are going to be talking about the leaders that founded this country. But I'm telling you what, the stuff that takes place on our streets, when you see arson and rioting and beating of people, that is criminal. And there is a lack of leadership yeah. in this nation and all the way down into our cities to control this stuff. These criminal groups, and that's exactly what they are, these criminal groups are living out the 1937 words of the Chinese Communist Party leader Mao Zedong when he wrote, quote, the guerrilla campaigns being waged in China today are a page in history that has no precedent. Their influence will be confined not solely to China and her present anti-Japanese struggle, but will be worldwide. And quote, it's from Mao Zedong on guerrilla warfare, translated by Brigadier General Samuel B. Griffith, United States Marine Corps, retired. So that came right from the Chinese Communist Party leader himself. And we can see this stuff playing out. But you know what, Emily? Let's not waste any more time talking about these individuals that Vladimir Lenin allegedly referred to as useful idiots <laughs> let's move on and let's talk about the people who have had a positive impact in our nation not the ones who are out to destroy our nation yeah they can watch cnn for that <laughs> <laughs> yeah yes cnn the communist news network yes <laughs> so what is the true meaning of independence day as stated earlier it is the day the second continental congress crossed the line from being subjects to the British crown to becoming treasonous tra traitors. That's right. That, it was treason. Yep. You know, they back then, it was the 13 colonies, and they were citizens of the crown, the, yeah. the British crown. And we don't have time to go into the background to what propelled this 
event to occur here where these 56 men met in the Pennsylvania State House, which is now Independence Hall in Philadelphia. I would love to be able to go into that, but there's a number of resources that we can point people to that they can find out, hey, the truth, not yeah. the rewritten history that the radical leftists out there want us to uh, do away with. 56 men who signed the Declaration of in Independence, they were signing their death warrants. 56 leaders exhibited Leaders exhibited leadership and exhibited the courage to stand up for their core values and what was right. And even their families suffered consequences mm -hmm. from the British crown as well. There's several books. I think it's called like Signers of the Declaration of Independence mm -hmm. or Signers of the Declaration that talks about that and what even the wives endured and their farms being burned up. Yeah. But 56 leaders who did not just talk about separating from the crown, I think is really key to point out, but rather they went beyond the coffee house mm -hmm. talk and they acted. Yeah. And that's, we have them to think this is why we're where we are today, at least as free. Yeah, ab Americans. absolutely. Action. They, they took, they took action. They didn't just sit around and talk about it. It wasn't like you could go to so many McDonald's in the United States <laughs> of America on any, any given morning. And there's usually a, a group of people, usually it's older men gathered off over in the corner and they're talking about the woes of everything that are going on. But I always wonder, hey, these guys that are belly aching over there in the corner, they're belly aching about the local government, county government, state government, federal government. They're, they're belly aching about this and about that. Is anybody out of that group actually taking any action to do the things that they were talking about, or did they just gather around and you know talk? Unlike these 56 men at Independence Hall, what we call it today, who took the action. Well, I want to read a section about what happened to these 56 men from the American story, the beginnings by David Barton and Tim Barton. And for those of you who are watching on YouTube, that's the cover of the book. Both the uh, Bartons here, they provide great information. Primary source information, people. Primary source. Don't rely on things that have been rewritten. When you're looking at the copyright dates or you're going into the bibliography of a book, look at the dates of these things. Go back to the original writings, the original documents. Not something that Professor Schmuckatelli wrote from Yale University, yeah, who's got so many degrees behind his name, he looks like a thermometer, okay? <laughs> yeah. So, from their book, nine signers died of wounds or hardships during the Revolutionary War. Five were captured or imprisoned, in some cases with brutal treatment. Mm -hmm. The wives, sons, and daughters of others were killed, jailed, mistreated, persecuted or left penniless. One was driven from his wife's deathbed and lost all his children. The houses of 12 signers were burned to the ground. 17 lost everything they owned. Every signer was prescribed as a traitor. Everyone was hunted. Most were driven into flight. Most were at one time or another barred from their families or homes. Most were offered immunity, freedom rewards, their property or their lives, and release of loved ones to break their pledged word or to take the king's protection. Their fortunes were forfeited, but their honor was not. No signer defected or changed his stand throughout the darkest hours. Their honor, like the nation, remained intact. Men of courage, men of perseverance, men of integrity. And again, that came from page 167 of The American Story, The Beginnings by David Barton and Tim Barton. It's quite a story from yeah. what we we hear that's put out there in the propaganda from the uh, news media and the leftist organizations and academia today, isn't it, Emily? I think it's sombering because it just is the saying freedom isn't free mm -hmm. and there is a cost to freedom, but is it worth it? Like, absolutely. Yeah. You know, absolutely. And they stuck by it. Yeah. They, they stuck by it. Which is very admirable. Mm -hmm. So in April 26, 1777, um, John Adams wrote in a letter to his wife, Abigail, 
posterity, you will never know how much it cost the present generation to preserve your freedom. I hope you will make a good use of it. If you do not, I shall repent in heaven that I ever too have the pains, pains to preserve it. Yes. Mm -hmm. So all the way back in 1777, John Adams is writing to his wife, Abigail, that he's hoping that this will be preserved into our future. So July 4th. Yes, it's a day to be celebrated, but... I think there's far too many people in this country that they think that July 4th is just merely a day to head down to the shore, head out to the beach, you know, go up to the mountains, fire up the barbecue grill, get drunk and shoot off fireworks, which, yeah. by the way, alcohol and fireworks is never, <laughs> excuse me, is never a good combination. And all those years I spent as a firefighter, I definitely saw uh, the results of that it, it brings out a, a incredible stupid factor now one of the busiest and, days of the year yeah yeah, yeah. and days. yeah it was yeah it, it really was one of the busiest days of the year for us and the fire department but again mm -hmm. john adams in the federalist papers he wrote that july 4th is a day to quote be celebrated by succeeding generations as the day of deliverance by solemn acts of devotion to god almighty End quote. Yes, God, much to the chain green and chagrin, chagrin. <laughs> <laughs> and constant propaganda to the left, our nation was founded on Judeo Christian principles. Yes, absolutely. Does that mean that the United States are, is now or was ever a Christian nation? No. Mm -mm. No. We, the country was founded on those Judeo christian christian foundations but for this nation to purely be a christian nation i believe then that would indicate that the clear majority of the country everybody would would be christians would be believers in jesus christ yeah. and that simply has has not been the case we have seen a, a steady decline over the years you know with the number of christians in this country and an increase in the number of people who are, are anti-Christian. And also yeah. here recently, the number of people, disturbing, disturbing things that we have seen in this country, the, the anti-Semitism, the anti-Jewish attitudes that are taking place in this nation. Hey, people, you're listening to this? That ought to scare the living daylights out of you. Pick up a good history book and see what happened in Nazi Germany in the 1930s. There's too many similarities yeah. occurring today to compared to then. I was reading The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich, and there's so many places in the margins I have written. Yep, this has happened here. This has happened here, 2020, so forth, and so on like that. Well, Emily, what do we get to add to that? Well, it's the satanic agenda, mm -hmm. for sure. I would say, like, we started all Christian, primarily, or religious, but... Mm -hmm. I think there is a different um, uh, honorability, like honoring God, mm -hmm. that was part of the culture and that has drastically changed yes. now. Mm -hmm. So what does it mean and what is it historically accurate is that many of our founding fathers were believers in Jesus Christ? So, yes, not all of them were. And, you know, there's certainly been a concerted effort over the, the years here, certainly since the 60s and the 70s, and it's picked up momentum to claim that none of the founding fathers were were Christians. And simply, that's not that's not the truth. Go back and look at the primary source material, folks. Again, I wish that we had the time to really delve into this, but but we don't. But I want to add on to what Emily was saying is even if there was someone who said, no, I, I was not, I am not a Christian, you know, there was an honoring of God and there was an honoring of people, you know, who believed in God, people who believed in Christ. Mm -hmm. So at the risk of sounding like I'm beating a dead horse, primary source material, primary, not the secondary, not the third, the tertiary, so forth and so on like that. I love a quote from Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> In Poor Richard's Almanac, Benjamin Franklin wrote, quote, being ignorant 
is not so much shame as being unwilling to learn, unquote. It greatly disturbed me what I saw in the news the other day. And folks, as I mentioned in the last podcast episode, we do pre-record these episodes. So I open up my phone. I go to the Nine News app out of Denver. And one of the headlines is Colorado State University is going to offer a college course on Taylor Swift. Wow. That's why this country's gone to hell on a greased pole because <laughs> our academians are offering stupid courses like that. But what for, are they even going to talk about? Yeah, that's just a that, crazy that, that, that's, thing. that's nonsense. That that oh. that is that is that is just that is just complete and total utter nonsense. It's stu <laughs> it's stupidity at the highest levels. Shame on you people up there at Colorado State University for putting something like that on. So as yeah. we head down towards the end of this particular episode, Emily, as you could tell, Emily and I are very adamant about the founding of our nation. We're very adamant about where this country has been and where it is gone and where it is at now. Our family has close ties to those founding fathers. And Emily is going to address that here momentarily. For myself, our family on my mother's side can be traced all the way back to coming to this country in the 1600s, ultimately winding up in Cape May County, New Jersey. I had ancestors that served in both New Jersey and Pennsylvania regiments fighting the British, and then also ancestors who were privateers. Now, many of you may not be familiar with that term, but a privateer was someone who had a boat that they could arm it, and they received a marquee from the Continental Congress authorizing them to attack British shipping. Yes, the British, they said, yes, that, that's legalized piracy, but they were, doing, they were doing the same thing as well. So we've got those ties that go all the way back. And from a military history standpoint, yeah. that's where service in the military started on my side of the family and has continued on the way up to this modern era to where my nephews were serving in the military. But Emily, talk about the family connection from your mom and my wife to the signer of the Declaration of Independence. Yeah, on mom's side, there is an ancestor. His name is Francis. I don't, I can never Francis remember. Francis Lewis. Francis Lewis. I can never remember his last name. <laughs> I get Francis Scott Key mixed up <laughs> in my brain. Um, but he was one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence. So we're, I think, what would be considered a daughter of the American Revolution. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I believe what I recall correctly and from the conversation that, uh, you know, Deb had with David Barton last year, he was familiar with Francis Lewis oh, yeah. and talked about how they lost their home. They lost their farm. Yeah. And so, folks, as Emily said it, freedom isn't free. There's people that have stood up for what is right. There's people who have stood up. They have died. They have lost everything. Men and women alike. Children as well. Standing up for the values of this nation. We have a constitution and that constitution is great. I just saw a headline yesterday, an MMA fighter out of Venezuela, after he won a fight, he was posed a question, what's your favorite book? And his response was, the United States Constitution. Hmm. Hey, folks, this is somebody from Venezuela, which they're all jacked up down there anyway in that country because of their, well, I, actually, I believe recently there was a change uh, in political leaders yeah, uh, down there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the turn things around quite a crazy country yeah <laughs> so july wow. 4th folks and you're downloading this podcast and you're listening you know we appreciate it but while you're grilling your hot dogs and burning your hamburgers think <laughs> back to the origins of this nation so that's all that we have time for today please visit my website at www.fireofficerleadershipacademy.com to learn more about how I can help you mentor, coach your decision-making abilities to improve your leadership skills as well. Look for my weekly leadership blog that comes out on my website and also posted on LinkedIn. 
and my Facebook business page. So Firehouse Talks is a product of Firehouse Talks. I got that kind of messed up, didn't I? <laughs> Firehouse Talks with Jersey Rick Igniting Leadership Excellence is a product of the Fire Officer Leadership Academy. Hey, and I'm not going to I'm not going to edit that out, people. You know, Emily and I are real and we're genuine. And the only thing that I I edit out or is a little bleep at the beginning of these things from the way it records and then I edit in the music. Other than that, hey, you're you're getting Rick and Emily real Emily real. raw. <laughs> yeah, you're you're getting it raw. So thank you for listening and thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting us and thank you for the the feedback that we have been getting. So until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.